Hi everyone. Today we're going to look at the ligaments of the horse's leg, the connectors that connect the bones together. There are a variety of ligaments and we can divide them into types. So perhaps the best place to, to start would be making a short list of the types of ligaments. So we have long, short, capsular, and annular. All the ligaments we will look at will fall into one of those four groups. Ligaments are the connectors that hold the bits and pieces together to make it a working skeleton. So across all the articulating joints that we'll see, you'll have a certain type of ligament, short, that will, short ligament that will hold the bones together and only allow them to articulate in a certain way. So let's start out with the proximal end and work to the distal end. If you use that as your methodology, then anytime you're working on anatomy, you'll have a system that you should follow and you're less likely to forget or miss things. So the first ligament that we would start with will be a very short one, and that will be a ligament that attaches the small metacarpal to the neighboring large metacarpal. So it's hidden in behind the bone, but we draw it in on either side here as a short ligament like that. That's the interosseous ligament, which is really not a, a well-named well -named ligament because that's the definition of a ligament between bones, interosseous. Os is the Latin word for uh, bone. So the interosseous Then we get into the more important ligaments of the horse's leg and the first one we're going to look at will be one of the check ligaments and it originates on the distal row of carpal bones and the proximal end of MC3 and it's actually hidden in behind MC2 and MC4. So it's in here and this is the subcarpal check ligament. It originates off that bone and off the proximal end of this bone runs down in the groove formed by MC2 and MC4 and inserts about halfway down the length of MC3 and inserts onto the deep flexor tendon, the deep digital flexor tendon. That's the subcarpal check ligament. So it inserts onto the deep digital flexor tendon which is running down the back of the leg and I won't draw that in right now. Distal to that, so further down the leg and deep to it, so further in on the leg is the origin of the suspensory ligament. It lies closest to the large metacarpal and lies in that groove formed by the small metacarpals, runs down the leg and attaches to a prominence on the medial and lateral face of the proximal sesamoids. So this is a strap that originates as one single tissue and then divides into two. So it originates up in this area in that groove, and runs down and divides and kind of forms a pair of suspenders. Attaches on a slope face of the proximal sesamoids. This is probably the most important ligament for us to learn about. It's a complicated structure. It's multifunctional in that it, it plays a couple of different roles on the horse's leg. First one is that it holds up these proximal sesamoids. So right here. It holds these sesamoids in position on the distal end of MC3. From there, it sends off a secondary branch, which passes around the medial and lateral side of the digit, going from the back of the leg, or the palmar face of the leg, to the dorsal face of the leg. On the side, it looks like this, forms a straight line, and combines with the main extensor tendon to insert onto the extensor process of P3. So that's the extensor branch of the suspensory ligament.
This part of the suspensory ligament holds up this bone and the other, the other sesamoids, so both sesamoids are held up by this long strap. And then this portion counteracts the pull of the deep flexor tendon on this bone which rotates around the distal end of, of P2. So the extensor branch is pulling P3 this way, so it has a force in that direction where the deep flexor tendon is coming down around the back and is pulling the bone that way. So from the back face or palmar face, you would see these branches looking something like this. They disappear around the corner to the dorsal face of the bone. Now, since this tendon, the large tendon, is pulling up on these bones, we need something else pulling down on the bones. But before we go there, we will put in the collateral ligaments, the stabilizer ligaments that hold the bones in position. So the collaterals hold the bones so they'll only operate on a certain plane. Just like your finger, it bends forwards and backwards, but there's no or very little side to side bend. Same with the horse's leg. It's designed to flex and bend forwards and backwards, but not side to side. And that's because of the collateral ligaments. So these, every joint has collateral ligaments. Otherwise, the leg would bend in an un, uh, unuseful fashion. So now what else do we need to put in? We need to put in the ligaments that hold the sesamoid down in position. So we start out with the shortest and the deepest ones. So we will start with the ligament that connects the two bones together to form one. That's called the intersesmoidian. Then we have the cruciate ligament, which is short, but it crosses over just like a brace that you would put in uh, some construction. Say you're making a stall door, you would have a brace that would cross like that and that would lock the shape and the position of the structure. So that's the D, says Morgan. Cruciate, says Morgan or Butler calls the X ligament, because it looks like an X. Then we have the short sesmorian, which lies out at an opposing angle, like that. So it would look like that. So that's the short sesmorian. On top of that, we have the middle sesmoidian, which lies in the V formed of the bone. On the palmar face of P1, you'll see that there is a V on the bone. So that's the middle sesmoidian. And then lastly, we have The superficial sesmoidian, which lies on top of all the others and comes down, and it's unusual in that it passes over two joints. So it passes over the fetlock or metacarpophalangeal joint, and it passes over the proximal interphalangeal joint. So that's the superficial sesmoidian. So again, we start out with the short sesmoidian, the deep sesmoidian. Next one is the middle sesmoidian, which is longer again. And then on top of that, we have the 
superficial seismoidium. So H is going to play a slightly different role. The longer the ligament, the more adjustment there's going to be. It seems that there's a lot of duplication, but they're all different lengths, and they will take load at different phases of the horse's stride, depending on, on how fast the horse is going, and if it's jumping over a fence or uh, landing from a drop. So all those ligaments, all those ligaments uh, below the sesamoid are going to counteract the pull of the suspensory ligament pulling the tissue up. So to the proximal interphalangeal joint, it is unusual in that there's very little flexion on it, and the reason for that is there are two ligaments on the polar face which stabilize the ligament, or stabilize the joint, and reduce the amount of flexion. And there are a pair of ligaments called the axial and abaxial ligaments. So as well as having the as well as having the collateral of the joint, we have the axial and abaxial ligaments. So they will be in this position here, looking at it from the side. From the back, the axial pair are the ones closest to the center line of the column, and the abaxial ones are the ones further away from the center line of the, the bony columns. So axial and abaxial. When you see ab at the beginning of a word, it means away from, abdicate, abduct. So abaxial, away from the center axis, axial, on or close to the center axis. And then that leaves the ligaments of the uh, distal interphalangeal joint. We will look at those on, a, on another talk. I, the last thing I want to include are the capsular ligaments and the annular ligament. The capsular ligament is a ligament that is kind of like a rubber boot, which encloses the, uh, the joint with joint fluid, just like uh, a joint on the uh, axle of your, your vehicle. So this, uh, this rubber boot makes the joint a closed environment and holds the joint oil in synovial fluid is held within the, the joint so that the working surfaces of the bones never actually touch each other. So that's the capsular ligament. And then the annular ligament is a simple strap that goes around from the medial to the lateral face and holds the tendons in place as they go around the corner. So we have three annular ligaments. We have the palmar annular ligament, which is a reasonably large strap on the palmar face of the leg, proximal to the fetlock joint or metacarpal phalangeal joint. Then we have a proximal digital annular ligament, which essentially forms an X on the back of the leg. It's quite a large structure, and it's superficial to the tendons and ligaments uh, on that part of the leg. So it really supports everything. It has a, a strong support function. And then there's a distal annular ligament, which is similar to the, the uh, that is similar to the uh, palmar annular ligament in that it's a strap that goes around the back of the distal part of the digit. So those are the three annular ligaments. So again, you start out with a list, the long, the short, the capsular, and the annular. An example of long would be the suspensory ligament. An example of short would be the interosseous ligament or some of the ligaments of the metacarpophalangeal joint or some of the ligaments further down in the leg. The capsular ligament is a rubber boot that encloses the joint, so it, it, it uh, contains the synovial fluid that lubricates the joint. And then the annular ligament, think of it like a zap strap that goes around the back of the leg. And those are the ligaments of the first two joints 
of the digit of the horse's leg. Thank you.